Hello friends, my name is Sachin Chauhan and you are watching video related to the operating system. Hello friends, in this video tutorial we are going to solve a problem based on round robin. So there are processes given and arrival times and bus times given for particular processes and here in question it said that the time quantum is 2 for this round robin algorithm. Fine. So now the first step is to draw a Gantt chart but as you know that it is a round robin which is the extension of first come first serve in a uh, round fashion and it is a preemptive first come first serve algorithm. Okay. So this preemption is depends on this time quantum and uh, that means if the process P1 having the burst time of 4 but it will execute only for a 2 because the time quantum is 2. So at only one instance it will going to execute for 2 and after one instance it is again going for the remaining 2 fine. So uh, Gantra starts from 0 but if this is looking like a very simple part but exactly it is not a very simple. So you have to be attentive. So look in this example you have to maintain a queue for a round robin fashion and uh, so start from this check for the time interval of 0 is there any process yes there is a process so p1 so you know that it's a time quantum is 2 and it requires 4 that means we are going to schedule this p1 up to 2 so but for the time interval of 0 we are having p1 process for 4 okay from this 4 we have scheduled 2 here now this could happen that until the completion of 0 to 2 we might have some another processes in your system yes there are some processes what is p2 and p3 process so put p2 and p3 in a queue so the execution time for p2 is 5 and for p3 it's a 2 okay as we have completed the task of 2 here it is a round robin fashion so put this p1 again back in a queue so p1 goes here for 2 fine ok so now the next process is p2 so schedule p2 here move this p2 out of your queue schedule p2 here the time quantum is 2 it requires 5 that means remaining is 3 so this is 2 plus 2 4 ok again same could have happened that another processes from this 2 to 4 comes to your system check that yes there are some processes this one and this one that is p4 and p5 so put that processes p4 and p5 here for 1 and execution time 6 as we have completed this 2 it remains for remaining 3 so put this p2 at back of the queue for 3 fine now again next one is p3 so schedule this p3 for 2 become 6 now check for the 6 there is a process so put this p6 process for 3 at the end of the queue as we have removed this p3 so it completes its execution as it remains only for 2 fine now next task is of p1 so p1 for 2 it is 8 move out of queue as its time requires only of 2 and we have given it to 2 it completes its execution next one is p4 so p4 for the execution time 1 though we are having a time quantum of 2 it completes or it needs only 1 so it is for only 1 9 fine now again p5 t5 like this 2 that means 9 plus 2 that is 11 fine but 6 minus 2 that is 4 and it is a round robin fashion so put this p5 at last for the 4 fine now next one is p2 for 2 that becomes 13 so again i am going to write here move this and put at last that is p2 for 1 fine next one is p6 for 15 and put at last that is p6 for 1 again last one is p5 for 2 that is 17 so move this p5 for 2 here if i draw a gantt chart again from 17 as i don't have a space if you have space you can continue this and if you have a space you don't need to break like this you, have, you can continue there so for 17 next job is p2 so p2 here and uh, it requires only one so it's 18 
so it goes from your system next one is p6 again for 19 so it again goes from your system and last one is p5 and for the time quantum of 2 that becomes 19 plus 2 that's 21 so it again goes from your system. all the jobs get scheduled and the gantt chart looks like this fine now we can draw a table here okay friends so now the completion time you know the completion time can be calculated from this gantt chart so check from right hand side to the left hand side the last occurrence of particular process so it's a p5 p5 for 21 so completion time of p5 process is a 21 p6 it's 19 so 19 p2 it's 18 so here 18 for as p, we know that p5 gets over p6 p2 is over p5 it's it is again over you can check from left hand side or the right hand side as you know so the next is i think p4 for 9 and next is p3 for 6 and p1 for here 8 okay okay friends okay fine so turnaround time the formula is turnaround time equals to completion time minus arrival time so completion time minus arrival time is 8 18 minus 1 17 6 minus 2 4 9 minus 3 6 21 minus 4 17 and 19 minus 6 13 fine and the last is waiting time equals to uh, turnaround time minus burst time so fine check here 8 minus 4 4 17 minus 5 it's 12 4 minus 2 2 6 minus 1 5 17 minus 6 11 13 minus 3 10 okay so again as you know that we have to find average turnaround time and average waiting time so here average turnaround time is so the turnaround time is calculated average turnaround time is calculated from this column the addition of this column is uh, 65 divided by total number of processes that is 6 so the answer is near about 10.83 okay and uh, average waiting time is again calculated from the particular column of average waiting time so the addition of this is a 44 and the total number of process 6 so the answer is near about 7.33 fine thank you if you like this video please press like and subscribe button thanks for watching